In Leviticus 10, we come across a strange story of how Nadav and Abihu, Aaron's sons, were destroyed as a result of offering strange fire before God. Aaron had to stand by and watch as his two children were taken away. Any loving parent would experience a wide range of emotions while reading this topic, so it's best that we try to understand what is going on here. Before getting into the story, we need to identify what has just happened in the previous Torah portion, as well as what was going on just before this incident took place. In Parashat Sav, we see God giving additional instructions for the, for the different types of sacrifices. God expounds on the sin, peace and burnt offerings in that portion. We also see the preparation ritual for the priests to serve in the Mishkan or Tabernacle. God is actively giving them instructions on how to be a priest, how to conduct themselves and what is truly important in their lives. They are to be a mediator between God and the people. More importantly, they are to represent God to the people. Their lives need to be conducted in such a way that when the people look at the priests, they see God. Let's get into the story and let's start with Leviticus 9 verse 22. Aaron raised his hand toward the people, blessed them and came down from offering the sin offering, the burnt offering and the peace offerings. Moshe and Aaron entered the tent of meeting, came out and blessed the people. Then the glory of Adonai appeared to all the people. Fire came forth from the presence of Adonai, consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. Leviticus 10 But Nadav and Avihu, sons of Aaron, each took his censer, put fire in it, laid incense on it, and offered unauthorized fire before Adonai, something he had not ordered them to do. At this fire came forth from the presence of Adonai and consumed them, so that they died in the presence of Adonai. Moshe said to Aaron, This is what Adonai said. Through those who are near me I will be consecrated, and before all the people I will be glorified. Aaron kept silent. Moshe called Mishael and Elzaphan, sons of Uziel, Aaron's uncle, and told them, Come here and carry your cousins away from in front of the sanctuary to a place outside the camp. They approached and carried them in their tunics out of the camp, as Moshe had said. Then Moshe told Aaron and his sons Eleazar and Itamar, Don't unbind your hair or tear your clothes in mourning so that you won't die, and so that Adonai won't be angry with the entire community. Rather, let your kinsmen, the whole house of Israel, mourn, because of the destruction Adonai brought about with his fire. Moreover, don't let the entrance, don't leave the entrance to the tent of meeting, or you will die, because Adonai's anointing oil is on you. Verse 8. Adonai said to Aaron, Don't drink any wine or other intoxicating liquor, neither you nor your sons with you, when you enter the tent of meeting, so that you will not die. This is to be a permanent regulation through all your generations, so that you will distinguish between the holy and the common, between the unclean and the clean, and so that you will teach the people of Israel all the laws Adonai has told them through Moshe. So straight after the offerings were made in Leviticus 9, we see the people rejoicing and revering God. This should have been a time of celebration. Instead, we see the story of Nadav and Abihu. What is God trying to tell us here? Also in Leviticus 10 verse 1, we see that God says that they did something that he had ordered them not to do. What did he order them to do? If you look back at Leviticus 6, 8-13, after God lights the altar himself by taking up the burnt offering, he tells them to make sure the fire is kept burning and to make sure it does not go out. There has not been an instruction to bring a different source of fire from anywhere else. The only instruction so far was to make sure it keeps burning and does not go out. We can also go back to Exodus 30 where God is giving instructions for the golden incense altar. And in verse 9, God explicitly states that you are not to offer unauthorized incense on it. The same word for unauthorized here is the same word used in our story of Nadav and Abihu. In order to better understand the story, we need to look deeper at the word used for strange fire, as this is what directly led to their destruction. The original Hebrew word used here is zuar, which means turn aside, strange, commit adultery, even prostitute. This is the same word used in 2 Kings 19 verse 24. Let's read that to get a bit more context. I have dug wells in foreign lands and drunk the water there. With the soles of my feet I have dried up all the streams of Egypt. It is also used in Numbers 18 verse 4 where God instructs the priests to take care of the tabernacle. They are to join you and be responsible for the care of the tent of meeting, all the work at that tent and no one else may come near where you are. The word for no one else is the same word, zuor. In this context, no foreigner may come near. In other words, 
Someone that was not appointed by God may not come near to the tabernacle and to do these duties. It is evident that Zuar means something or someone that comes from a foreign place or was not appointed. Now, if we look at the paleo of the word Zuar, we see the following. Zav means food, cut or nourish. Vav means to add, secure or hook. And Rosh means first, top or beginning. Now, if we try to string this together in a sentence, we get something like to nourish and add something to what was there first. So what were Nadav and Abihu doing here? To be honest, if you look at Jewish and Christian sources, you will get a wide variety of reasons. In terms of biblical links, we get a few hints here and there of what may have happened, and it paints a pretty important picture for us as believers. Firstly, it could be said that they offered fire from another altar, possibly a pagan altar, or fire purposed for a pagan god perhaps. When we look at 2 Kings 19.24 again, we see that God says he had dug wells in foreign lands and that the soles of his feet had dried up all the streams of Egypt. Could it be that Nadav and Abihu were still heavily invested in the Egyptian deities? Were their hearts just not in the right place? And did they perhaps take their role lightly or mockingly? If we go back to our portion that we just read in Leviticus 10, we see that in verse 8, God says, Don't drink any wine or other intoxicating liquor neither you nor your sons with you, when you enter the tent of meeting, so that you will not die. It is pretty evident that Nadav and Abihu died after entering the tent of meeting. Perhaps they were drunk, although we cannot be sure. Just because a instruction is given in the midst of this story, it does not link it specifically to the story. So what were Nadav and Abihu actually trying to achieve here? It seems as though they were trying to approach the Holy of Holies with their senses and incense, and they used fire that never came from the brazen altar. Whatever their reasoning and whatever the actual situation that caused them to be destroyed was, we can learn a few valuable lessons from the story. Number one, as a leader, you are held to a higher standard. James 3 verse 1 says, Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Number two, we need to do things the way that God instructs us. Worshipping Him in a way that He never authorized is literally playing with fire. We need to check everything in our walk with God. Are we offering what God would call strange worship practices or unauthorized incense in our walk with God? Do we observe festivals that seemingly look godly yet were never instructed by God? Number three, we are called to be a kingdom of priests. Revelation 1 verse 6 says, And He has made us to be a kingdom priests to his God and Father. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So if we are a royal priesthood and we are to function as a priest, we need to know all we can about being a priest in the kingdom of God. To do that, we need to study Leviticus. 